Hi, I'm Dan Horn, and this is the CSS News. Today we're on the CSS News. The CSS News is a full-size replica of an ironclad ship from the Civil War. When people think of ships today, they think of large metal cruise ships. But 200 years ago, it wasn't like that. 200 years ago, if anybody mentioned the word ship, they would think of a wooden vessel. But through the Civil War, technology advanced to the point where they started to put iron onto ships. And with that, warfare was revolutionized on the seas. So why didn't they have ironclad ships before the Civil War? Two technologies were required before you could have an ironclad ship. One was a way to move them forward. With wooden ships, they're light enough that the wind can push them all over the world. But for iron and all that weight, you needed a steam engine. And with the steam engine, all of a sudden, it was possible to move it through the water. The other reason that there weren't ironclad vessels before is the need for iron. Iron is very heavy. It's hard to move. So you need trains to be able to move it inexpensively. The other thing that trains give you is they have a great demand of iron themselves. The rails are made out of iron. The locomotives made out of iron. So you already have bigger foundries. So all of a sudden you can produce the quantity necessary to clad a ship in iron. The CSS Noose was a flat bottom boat. Flat bottom boats mean less draft. Less draft means that you can go into shallow places like rivers. You can also see that this is wood here, not iron. Below the water line, they didn't bother to put iron on. You couldn't get hit by shot and shell there. It couldn't pierce the boat. But it also meant that there was less weight, and less weight means less draft. As you can see, the CSS Noose has two propellers, and the two propellers end up giving it a max speed of six knots. This ship is not that steerable and it's not that fast, but what it does have on the front is a beak. And one of the ways that it would defeat its enemies, the wooden ships, would be to ram it, and then once they've stove in the side, the ship will sink. So both the North and the South saw the need for ironclad ships. But at the beginning of the war, they had very different resources and they had very different abilities. So the North immediately goes and starts to design a ship, and they design a new ship, it's the Monitor. And the Monitor-class ship ends up being the predominant ship of the U.S. Navy for the next 50 years. The South was in a very different position. They had less manufacturing capability, and they were also being blockaded. The blockade had to be broken. This is how they got resources from Europe. Instead of designing a ship from scratch and figuring out how to do that, what they did instead was they took the Merrimack and they refitted it so that it became an ironclad ship. And so the first ironclad battle is between the Monitor and the Merrimack, the northern ship and the southern ship, and they end up fighting to a draw. After the Civil War, the balance of power changed between Europe and America because of the ironclad. Britannia rules the waves and they controlled every ocean. Ironclad ships had defeated wooden ships, even to the ratio of 12 to 1. Everyone in England knew that their ships were useless against ironclads, but they felt that ironclads were shore-only vessels, that the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean would protect England from those ships. But the U.S. government ends up sending a monitor-class ironclad ship to England, and when it pulls into the London Harbor, everybody understands the era of the wooden ship is over. <laughs> 